<laughs> I, I'm so glad to be here in Segovia at IE University. It's, it's so exciting for being here for the Hay Festival. Um, I just came back from New York where we had our kind of first opening party at Solar Carve Tower, which is a tower that we just completed along the High Line in New York City. Um, it's at 4010th Ave. Um, it's not completely done, but almost. We had a great um, gathering there with architects and journalists and, and the building owners um, to on the, up on the roof of the building where you could get great views of Manhattan, the Hudson River, the High Line, and everything New York. The first thing I did was look at you know the, the High Line itself, which was this you know incredible abandoned railway, which was fast becoming a very interesting garden and park, and there were plans for it. Um, and when we looked at the zoning for what we could build directly adjacent to the High Line, I was shocked that it allowed us to, we could like even go over the High Line. In fact, several buildings had already done that. Um, and the planting along the High Line is amazing. It's, it's you know, very much about the native um, plants that were found there and things that could grow in New York. And it's really supposed to be a place where it, it encourages biodiversity and it's beautiful. But if we would have built our building as of right with the zoning given, it would have shaded out the Highlands Garden there and, and probably killed all the plants uh, that were already there. So, so we took a step back and really thought about, you know, what is different about this site? And, and you know, it, it just dawned on us that um, it's very different than traditional zoning plots in New York City where you have this very effective zoning um, ordinance which um, asks the buildings to step back from the street to allow light to get down to the streets. So it preferences the streets. Here we have at the High Line, it's a park, it's a public park, but it's in the middle of the block, not on the edges. And so there's no protection for it whatsoever. In fact, the zoning allows you to build over, <laughs> over it. Um, so it was really just a, a moment to step back and say, hey, you know, th this is, something's not right here. Um, maybe we could make a building volume that respects this new public park. When we started the project, we were actually appro approached by a couple of, uh, actually the owners of land. They weren't really developers. They were owners of land. Their family had um, owned a lot of land in the meatpacking district. Um, and so they were very supportive and very open to our approach to design this project. Um, we, we wanted to show how a building could be a good neighbor. And, and even though the zoning wasn't um, allowing it, we wanted to step back from the High Line Park and let light and, and light into the High Line, but also views from people walking along the High Line. So we, we had a lot of support from the owners who hired us and to, to go ahead and try to do a building that would um, allow light and views to the High Line. Uh, we were doing like a 12 or 13 story building at the time we were planning um, and you know with a very strange footprint um, but we were able to pull this the mass of the building the volume it's a it's an office building um, away from the High Line and we, we did a side core um, in in the darkest part of the site so so really the result is you have this completely beautifully clear floor footprint um, with no core in the middle um, which has great views all around it and at the same time it's doing something really great for the public realm so it's kind of like a win-win situation so, so the design um, we did a, a it's a speculative office building um, eventually we brought on the the owners brought on a developer to help get this project finished it's Aurora Capital um, and they were also very supportive in this idea of doing a, a concrete structure with very high ceilings um, and and glass that is low reflectivity um, which means that it's safer for birds and birds that migrate along the Hudson but it's also safer for drivers that are driving along the West Side Highway reducing the glare that you get you know off of shiny buildings so, and then we did this really special thing on these carved areas. So we call it the solar carve building. And the carves are really the angles carved from the sun um, 
that shaped the building. And in those places, we did these beautiful faceted um, glazing, three-dimensional that creates these special parts of the floor plan.